<laughs> Got to get the wiggles <laughs> out now. Yeah. Hey, I just realized you interjecting my intro last time made me not intro us. I never oh, welcomed right. him. <laughs> he didn't. Yeah, I he never did welcomed not. him to oh, find the crowd. No, that was that was. Talk about the plane was like perfect, beautiful landing, and then like its wing just like broke off. <laughs> yeah, final destination. <laughs> that was yeah, oh. that was my bad, but I'm not gonna make the mistake. So welcome to Five's the Crowd. Hey. hey, I will be your host tonight, and it's like I said, it's gonna be a dark one. Uh, first off, You're so happy me, about all it. you sick people listening. You know what you clicked on. Uh, yes, this, you read the title. You've requested this. I have to of. admit, like a lot of people out there, this is my stuff that I get excited about. Oh, do you really? I do. Uh, I, I know, had to be here. <laughs> <laughs> you dick popping <laughs> sick wow. son of a gun. <laughs> I'm just kidding. First <laughs> off, let me introduce the guys for tonight and for every night, mm. for the most part. We got Tony. Hello. Austin. Hey. Chris and Cam. Hey, it's me. So <laughs> Chris is just here. He yeah. hates tonight. And I, I don't, don't think like he liked the last shit. episode either. And the movies uh, are all right. You can yeah. talk about movies, but they still freak me out. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the next episode you're also going to hate. Yeah. Probably. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. It's okay. <gasps> it's all right. Just know I love you guys. <laughs> That's why he's here. <laughs> Suffering. So... How much do you guys know about good old Jeffy Dahmer? I don't enough know. He's a f- freak. Enough to know I don't want to know more. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's, so. I'm, I'm on the same path. <laughs> like, you're like, you do the, just the intro to it and reading of what it's about. You're like, yeah, that's good enough. You yeah. know, Overview. a lot of people I've been sharing on their stories that literally they only got X amount of minutes into the new Dahmer film before they had to pop out, like just the, exit. Uh, the new series or whatever. Yeah. The, isn't yeah. it a movie? It's a series. No, it's a, it's oh, a series. it's a series. Yeah. Ten part I have, series. I have had ten parts. Three or four oh. different friends all say I lasted twenty some odd minutes into the episode. Couldn't handle it. It's just Dude, too it's, dark. It's too much. It's it's a it's lot. It's a lot. It's yeah. a lot. Have you seen it? The ep- I'm, you, I'm two episodes in. Are you? Yep. Still going. My teeth hurt. I'll finish. Yeah, you will. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ew. Like Dahmer? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Gross. <laughs> Gross. I really don't know much, but I don't <sighs> like camps. I have I learned about much. I have learned about Zach that the uh, like really but I know. twisted stuff I that you do, you me. like it and I it's don't know why. He's a closet creep. Like he, what, he referred me to the podcast Sword and Scale, which is like a true crime podcast, and some of the stories I'm like, oh my god! I'm yeah, like, it is no old barb with that podcast. Like my blood is liter- literally chilled. I'm like shivering. Yeah, it's so I disgusting. It. You're a vampire. He's cold. Look, his, his <laughs> lip is chattering. Not for real. Do you want a jacket? No, it's just just nasty shit. <laughs> Uh, yeah. For real, this this yes, this is gonna get dark. Uh, you, do you know a whose idea was this? Yeah, well enough to know. Cams. I, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had the relevance. I remember in school, like I, I, I don't know if my teacher got in trouble, but we actually had to research this. What? Dom, what? Dom specifically. Like, Dang. Like serial killers. Oh, because mm. your teacher was wondering if you guys would catch them. No, my sister. I think it was like. His sister did a report on serial killers, and she told me all about them. I think it was like for, I th- it, the, the our officer for the school was actually doing a class. I think it was like, I can't remember the exact term of what the class was, but we had to do. Uh, anyway, it, well, that reminds me of one. Of, it's one of those things. Like I feel when you were a kid, like. There was a lot more fear around serial killers. Like, you felt like it was something we would have to deal with. Oh, yeah. Like, like there's one in every neighborhood. Right? It's like that guy who makes the joke about quicksand. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> I grew up thinking quicksand was going to be a lot bigger of a problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it shows all the pictures of people in quicksand. Like <laughs> That being said, did you see that? I don't know if I sent it to you. There was a video on Reddit where a guy picks up a rock and he throws it and it looks like sand. And literally the rock just disappears. And you're like, that is quicksand. <laughs> yep. Oh, gosh. wow, that That's was crazy. Gonzo. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. See the serial killer. Th- oh, sorry. Oh, what I was going to say is, Cam and I the other day we actually spoke about how weird it is that so many people are into the serial killer, like topic genre. Mm-hmm. genre because it's a huge new thing. Well, and it's is it really new? Well, well, I mean, the last well, few years, I, I guess think. maybe maybe it's more mainstream? out of the closet. Now. Yeah, I think it's become far more mainstream. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you browse Netflix, and it's all like a uh, crazy neighbor next door. Like it was, or this it's a lot less that, taboo. Like what was that? Yeah. What was that podcast? That kind of kicked this all off for us. 
No, what? for everyone. Oh, I don't know. There was a true crime podcast. It was Serial. I don't know. Do you guys haven't heard of Serial? No. Uh, like, Serial, I feel like it, it was kind of at that stage where podcasts were becoming, like, really popular, like, four or five years ago. And it was a true crime one. I can't remember the f- who it followed at first. But I feel like ever since that podcast, everyone's been way into true crime. Hmm. Like, Got you've you. seen tons of documentaries come out about all kinds of serial killers, all kinds of crazy events. All this different stuff, and now everyone's like so locked into it. I mean, we're even talking about it. Like yeah. it's been so popular because of it. I well, got it. And I, sorry, one Go more thing. It. I just wanted to finish this idea. Is I and Cam and I were discussing like why is it so prevalent? And it's we came to the the final idea that it's really people are trying to make sense of the unsensible. Like right. you can't mm-hmm. make sense of it. You mm-hmm. can't wrap your brain around things that are so heinous right. and you're trying to understand mm-hmm. it. And there's just no understanding. See, no. I think it goes back to the movie strangers because it's like, yes, why'd you do it? Oh, cause you were home. No, there needs to be a reason. Like yeah. you, we need to know that like there's what's the something psychological that did it, right? side of it. Because it's almost like we need that. We have this, this need to either be able to identify it and avoid it. Or like fix it, you know what I mean? Like, there's got to be something. It's a very, it. it's a very problem solving, yeah, mindset that we have. Mm-hmm. A plus B equals C. Like, I need to, I need yeah. what is B so I can get to C. Because again, if if there's no reason for it, then all bets are off, and you could literally be murdered by anyone. Yeah. And well, that's I, terrifying. I've always mm-hmm. wondered, too. It's like you hear about these, you know, the big name serial killers and how they've, you know, they, it seemed like they were all through the 70s and 80s. Some rolled into the 90s a little bit. But then I, it's like I feel like and this is just me. It's like I feel like the whole serial killer aspect kind of died out. But they're still out there. You just kind of wonder. It's like, are they going to come more? relevant years from now and then it's like oh my gosh that was going on i think the problem but. nowadays is that there's it's too hard to do it yeah there's cameras people mm. phones everywhere speaking of which and there's there's a new thing that backs this have you seen this thing that was trending on uh twitter uh-uh. this i i wish i'd have taken better note of it but basically there's this new ai that can literally look at an Instagram photo and it'll, it'll pick out where that photo, that photo was taken. I mean, if it, right. Like it can't have too much bokeh or whatever. Like it needs to be able to be, pick out what's in the to background. See the background. Ha- and may probably in a major city, but basically it, you can take a photo. You can, if you, if you can't figure out where it is, you can tell it and it'll actually t- pull up the, the CCTV footage of you taking that photo. Oh you can gosh. actually see the date, time, and everything. And, like, you can actually watch the person walking down the street or, like, posing on the street and getting the picture taken. Have you seen that? I haven't seen that. It I've was seen... going wild on Twitter. Dude, that's scary. That's like, what was that movie with freaking Eagle Eye? Yeah. It's like Eagle Eye. Yeah. Crime. Or in Batman Dark Knight Rises. I'll have to send it or to no, you guys after this. But it literally like, was like, what? No wonder why yeah. things like this well, aren't prevalent. You can't even take an Instagram photo. Mm-hmm. I've seen I've seen a kid do it himself. So without the AI, he did like some TikToks where he'll take a picture and he'll figure out where they were. And just based on the information of that Instagram post and picture, he'll find like the city, the you know, the the state, the city, and then he's like narrowing it down. Okay, the, here's a forest here, the forest in the background. Like he literally does it himself and within less than an hour figures out where that picture was taken. Wow. Like in a forest? Well, anything like on a street, whatever. Like okay, the street, same, I can see thing. easier, but it's like, the yeah. same as the AI. He just has to have. Uh-huh. Well, because think about it. Let's say he knows because I want your attention. <laughs> I'm listening. He knows what state it was taken in and what city. Right. And there's a forest in the background. Well, what if there's only one forest in that city? Right. I get that. Yeah. You know. So I thought you like someone's there. in a forest and they can he could even be like, he'll even be like oh that forest I'm like that's insane. I think generally well, this game is based on a Google Maps. Yeah. So it's, it's not like they're deep diving into forest, but you can with a you know right. with the type of fencing and the right. type of scenery mm-hmm. and the type of ground and soil and roads. Yeah. And you have to you have some type of landmark. Time of day. Time of day. Like yeah. Just, yeah. You have to have I've some seen, type of landmark. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. That's wild. So that's probably why. 
Anyway, nice, big, huge, long segue. I was going to say, I don't even know where you guys are going with that. <laughs> I'm just going to say real quick, We're talking too. about how it's harder to be a serial killer Completely nowadays. off topic. Is it, though? Off topic. It is. is it? Very. It, it is. I don't think it is. How long ago did Dahmer it is. take place? <laughs> 70s. Uh, 70s. It was 91. in the 70s, 80s. And then he, his final one was like so early So how many 90s. camera phones did he get caught on? None. <laughs> it didn't exist. Real quick. All right. Go, All right. Chris. See how easy? Free. Hey, free. See how much easier it would be? Hey, but how? how? Free. Okay. I'm going to kick your butt. <laughs> <laughs> I used to think cereal killer was like, I was like, why are they name it after a cereal, like a breakfast food? Oh, which, yeah. Did which you ever do that? Killer? Yeah. For a what, long time, yeah. Man, Man I, I was dumb when I was young. <laughs> I was like, like, Lucky Charm Killer. What did Lucky do to you? The Twix. <laughs> He's murdering the all Twix the mascots. Twix Twister. Twix. Know. Twix is not a... Oh. Tricks? Tricks. <laughs> not I tricks. don't know my junk food, guys. I'm not too... I don't I forget. Uh, I mean, tricks are for kids. Yeah. In my... So, t- never mind. Go! Go. Okay, go. <laughs> oh, you're say, not, not going to finish your thought? No, I'm not. Why? We're good. Because I lost it. Okay. I get... Well, I was going to yeah. say in my stories that I did a few podcasts ago... There was that one about that serial killer down in Arizona. That took place like mid to that to mid 2000s or whatever. 2010. Still, smartphones 20, weren't prevalent. But it wasn't 2010s. a good run either. It wasn't a good run. Like some of these he guys killed had like a good six run. or seven people. Uh, I've who, seen better. Who was this? Who? What are you, which <sighs> I can't one? Do you remember which one it was? Down in Arizona, the one where the guy was peeking in through the girl's window. There were six or seven with that one. Yeah. Oh, See, I'm not saying him? it's. I'm not saying it's impossible. Or what they I'm call saying him. it's harder. Oh, it's a lot harder. Way harder. Just yeah. saying. Kids, people so have step trackers it up, on, guys. They have phones, GPS. Hey. Like, there's so much technology that can stop this kind of thing. And we live in a world where everyone's so quick to to call out anything that seems weird. Not yeah, a lot of privacy, true. for sure. Yeah. So, speaking of which, of calling out, I got this list. I'm going to go off a timeline for this, like kind of like what we normally do. There's a timeline from getting that. I searched up a bunch of timelines. This is probably the most prevalent and the best one that I could find. That being said, human error might come into contact and I might miss a couple things or miskew a couple things or get a couple things wrong for that. I apologize at first. <laughs> That's for, those for you, who keyboard want, warriors. Yes, for those who want to call me out in the comments, hey. I apologize. Feel free to correct me. That's yeah, fine, I was but say, I'm just call, saying... Ask for help, assistance. Yes. If we if we make a mistake, correct us, but no. be nice about I'm, it. I'm just saying... This we, isn't our full-time job, guys. We've yeah. had a few Not call yet. us out and call us pretty much idiots, and the hey, hell you guys fine. doing? That's fine. So I'm just saying They're there might be some mistakes, and for that, dads. I apologize. <laughs> trying to talk like we know what we're talking about. Yes. This is more so just our take. Yeah. It's just a fun conversation. So. Is it fun? It is. Chris Here we go. <laughs> All right. So, May 21st, 1960, we've got the birth of Jeffrey Dahmer. Ooh, Ooh I just was shuddered. Born in May, gross. Yeah, May 21st, born. 1960. Not allowed. Uh, <laughs> 1964, um, he gets diagnosed with a double hernia in his scrotum. What oh, man, I'd kill too. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> that explains it. Okay. Well, here's now the funny thing. Now we have made we sense it. of the insensible. It. Here's we the funny thing. Closed. So, <laughs> with, with surgery, it corrected it, um, but extreme pain suffered by um, with him before and after the surgery could be conceivably have influenced later feelings of sexual inadequacy and insecurity. So he was four when this. Was, yes. Yeah, okay. Lionel, who is his father. Lionel. Li- or Lionel, Lionel, whatever, same thing. Tomato, <laughs> tomato. Lionel Dahmer. Um, he actually claims that it was from this time on that Jeffrey began to become more and more withdrawn and introverted. So he's it, he, he's pretty much blaming... The hernias. The hernia yeah. is what started his, his Wasn't weirdness. he only like four? Yes. So, so is it weird of me to call a four-year-old a wuss? Or is it okay because we know he turned out sick? Go for it. Am I weird? Is it, is it rude of me to call a four-year-old a w- Go for, for it. For not handling two hernias in a scrotum? <laughs> I mean, for <laughs> actually, no, four-year-olds are 35 <laughs> years old, and I think I would struggle. Here's but. the thing. Four-year-olds <laughs> are wusses in nature, because the worst thing that ever happened to you is the worst thing that ever happened to you. Yeah, I know. So. I'm just, it was more so. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm only calling him a wuss because of who he turned out to be. Jeffrey not Dunn. because he was right. <laughs> um, wuss took out some folks. 
November 1966, two years later, um, his mom is actually pregnant with um, another child. Um, basically, at that time, Jeffrey's dad, Lionel, describes him as being extraordinarily shy and withdrawn during this period, actually terrified of new people and situations. So he's feeling withdrawn. Introverted. You know, can't take the fact that, you know, they're focusing on the pregnancy um, because the pregnancy was actually very difficult for her. And so they're more focused on this. And so he's feeling more withdrawn, like more. She had a hernia. Maybe. Did she? I don't know. Oh, I was going to say, I've never heard that. But did, all right. did, did they give birth to a boy or a girl? Another boy. Another boy. Oh, so he was really inadequate, mm-hmm. huh? Mm-hmm. So uh, 1966, two years later. So he is eight years old. Um, they move again, which this is now like the the second or third move. That they've done for him. So, uh, or, and so anyways, yeah, he, uh, Jeff's dad actually reports that he was, that Jeffrey was sexually abused by a neighbor boy at this time. Mm. Um, even though Jeffrey can't remember anything su- happening, but the dad claims that he was sexually molested. By a boy? Yes. How old? It doesn't say. Mm. Doesn't say. So this is his dad saying it. Yeah. So the dad was claiming it, but Jeffrey's like, I really don't remember it happening. Sounds mm. like the dad's creating a lot of excuses for poor parenting. It's funny. Um, or raising this. If, if you read, a, if you read into it a lot of it, a lot of it, a lot of people are blaming his mom and his dad for the way that he turned out. Hmm. The mom had hypochondria and depression, and yes, in fact, so she, um, she. So this. Uh, late 1970, so he's, you know, 18, 17, 18, right around that time. Um, his mom was hospitalized, hospitalized twice for psychiatric problems. Mm. Um, according to his dad, um, she's been taking drugs to deal with her extreme nervousness for years. Um, they didn't work well. Um, she was not a stabilizing influence in his life. Um, basically... During his school years, reputa- his re- uh, Jeff's reputation was a misfit. Um, pranks, shouting things at strange times, bleeding like a sheep, and faking epileptic fits during school. Bleeding, what's that? Bleeding, bleeding, like, yeah. a bleeding like a sheep. Bleh. Oh, ble- oh, okay. Bleating. I heard with bleeding. Oh, with bleating. The Sorry, okay. bleating. It's that Utah oh. accent. Yeah. Yes. Bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> Sheep. Bleating. She, sheep's bleating. Sheep's bleating again. <laughs> What's the bleating? Sheep, sheep, <laughs> sheep's is sheep's bleating. Damn sheep. <laughs> sheep's is just bleating. So <laughs> he has basically a crazy mom. Right. Um, he's got a dad who also growing up, as he's growing up, um, basically Jeff needed to show interest into something. And they found a you know dead animal underneath the house. And his dad brought it out and was showing him about it. And they actually, him and his dad, would go find roadkill and cut it open so that way Jeff could see things. They'd do it together? Yes. Hmm. So, well, and his dad was a chemist, right? I believe so, like yes. Through, through most of Jeff's childhood, I read that his dad was going to school and different things, and yeah, so he, he wasn't PhD, home a lot. Yeah, he had a PhD lot. in chemistry. So, his, so he was home with his mom, who's a hypochondriac, yep. depression, like, shut-in. She wouldn't ever get out of bed yep. mm-hmm. while dad was at school. And, and then, in fact, Jeff came home from school one day, and his mom had OD'd on the bed, and he had to call the house, called the police <laughs> to come get the mom. So... um but so, yeah, basically a lot of messed up stuff growing up, you know, whether you want to blame the parents or not. Me personally, I think that's a poor ass excuse. Yeah. I was going to say, is it crass of me to not feel sorry? No, I don't. Like I, I, I was reading some of the comments, like looking through this stuff and on Facebook and everything. And people are like, I blame the parents for his actions and for what. And it's like, no, I'm sorry. His parents were dicks. His dad was actually his dad was as. as Dickish as he could have been, he tried to do good for Jeff. His mom was not there present. She was a complete just stupid. 
<laughs> and, just call it like we uh, see it, folks. Just call it. <laughs> and, but uh, to me, that's no excuse. I'm sorry. Like, there's there's, like, there's people like the out there with worse parents that don't grow up to be serial killers. Exactly. Oh, yeah. They learn and how not to kill people. Exactly. It's not like the parents were like, hey, go murder this person. Exactly. Like, they didn't encourage yeah. did, that. Did the parents thing. help at all? Probably not. But for that to be, you know, oh, blame his parents. No. I see. It's a and lame I, ass excuse. I don't know. So I, I always go through the debate of genetic or, or are you Nature a product of your, yeah, are you a product of your environment or whatnot? I think to a degree, yeah, but there's always a way to come out of it for the most part, unless I you feel have like psych, 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 well, what? I was going to agree. Just like there's certain behaviors that are due to the way you were raised and things like that. But then there's this where I feel like there's a chemical Something in right. the brain that did not that switches it, yeah. even more. See, and I mean, well, I've you, learned how not to act through certain ways that I was treated from people growing up. See, and I, I was, I was gonna say, you hear those stories about like, like two brothers grow up under an abusive alcoholic father. One never touches alcohol in his life. The other one becomes an abusive alcoholic right. father. Mm-hmm. Like they had the exact same environment, the exact same things happened to them, but they took completely opposite it's paths. What you choose to do with your life, right? At one point or another, you have to grow up and be the adult and choose what you're going to do in your life. Take for your life, yeah. So uh, June 4th, 1978, which is my birthday, by the way. 78? No, June 4th. (laughs) June 4th. My birthday's not for another nine years. Anyways, um, he graduates from high school. Um, By this point, he's actually living alone. His parents are going through a really bad, bitter divorce um, and had... And each of them had moved out. She's dead. No. She OD'd, but she they OD'd, but they saved her. Oh, she got a PM. Oh, okay, She's, okay. Yeah. So they're going through a bitter divorce. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> um, because he was 18 at the time and legally an adult, um, the law basically didn't allow for anyone to have custody over him. So that's why he's living alone. Um, and basically also didn't help with it. Basically, it was a lack of emotional support continued. Because now he's on his own. He's 18 years old. Parents aren't really there anymore because they're going through a bitter divorce. So he's kind of just learning things on his own. Um, June 18th, 1978. So we're two weeks after he graduates from high school. He picks up 19-year-old Stephen Mark Hicks hitchhiking. They went back to the house for a few beers. When Hicks tried to leave, Dahmer clubbed him with a do- uh, barbell and strangled him with it. Dumbbell. Barbell, dumbbell. Barbell. Oh. Same thing. Okay. Different. Sorry, I didn't know. No, you're good. Huh? <laughs> one's real long, one's not. <laughs> dumbbell and a barbell? Yeah. yeah. Barbell is a really long one you can curl with. A dumbbell is a single armed weight. Oh, well, this says barbell. So yeah, I, barbell is a long, long A lot long easier one. to strangle with a barbell than a dumbbell. Yeah. Because you have to when try you get... to choke someone with a dumbbell. <laughs> you <laughs> think it's too fast. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> over those the... aerobic ones. <laughs> so, can I just back up real yeah. quick on Basically, the roadkill yeah. thing? Shake weight. Um, shake weight. That'd be an embarrassing way to die. Sorry. <laughs> Hammered to death with a shake weight. Oh, Especially if it had the. Oh, 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 um, Jeffrey asked him how to like preserve and bleach the bones because he liked the sound of the bones clinking together. Oh yes, that's right. And that's he would he would actually start to he would study the skeletons of mm-hmm. live animals. Like he would fill them and kind of try and like map out where their bone structure is. Like he was obsessed with bones, which is also the same thing his dad taught him um, about the brain and how the brain can do amazing things. Um, you know, he, he talked about there was one time, I, I can't remember if he said it was a raccoon or whatever it was, that um, they had put acid on the brain. And they said, basically, you would think that you would be dead, like it would go through and stuff. And he said, it's surprisingly, your body, the body was still reacting and doing things when you when it shouldn't have been. And so this is, you know, this is stuff that, you know, as a chemist that he had saw and witnessed and stuff like that. And so. 
But, but he, he even had he had like preserved animal parts and skeletons and stuff in a little shack. And uh, at one point, he even like would take their skulls and put them on crosses. And uh, and then he would have like his friends come out and th- he would think it was funny to see their reactions and different things. Friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, People he convinced to come well, over. He actually, uh, he apparently, I don't know if you were going to talk about this. He apparently did have a fan club at school of friends. He oh, I did not know that. that. They called so it, is, they called it like doing a Dahmer. Like yes, he would do these yes. pranks and they so, called it. Yeah, because I know he did a bunch of stuff around school that mm-hmm. made him like that class clown. Yep. He would be person. very class clowny, do these tricks, these things where he would fake having a seizure and stuff like that. Yeah. And they called, called it doing a Dahmer. Well, he built a little group of friends who were so enamored by it or whatever they dubbed themselves the Dahmer fan club and would actively encourage him to take it further and to do more and stuff and apparently years later when they found out he was a serial killer it was like a massive like shock to all of them one of the guys says uh he they quoted him it's like getting hit with a two by four suddenly all the goofball antics and silly things we'd done became completely sinister and troubling and now we know them as jackass. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to jump back. I just wanted to kind of set no, the scene good. for his childhood and kind of. Yeah. Know, no, there's some. One interesting thought. thought that I had while thinking about it is nowadays, like, right, it takes a herd to, to raise a kid or, mm-hmm. you know, a what, village. A, a village. village. Yeah. So nowadays we have social media and people learn through social media and they have basically all these cultivating thoughts of like what is right and what is wrong. But back then there wasn't social media. So no. really the only moral compass you had was anything that you learned from your immediate yeah, your, family. Your immediate either that or your, your neighbors around you. Your, right. your so school it's interesting or... to think of like you have those people in essence, what would those be people be the, the boomers Back then, no, no, that, was Gen, Gen X. that was Gen X. This, 1960s? Gen, Gen X? 60s, 70s? Yeah, yeah the it's boomers, Gen X. Yeah, the boomers, boomers were all the ones born right after the war. Yeah. 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 Anyway. So like four, yeah. But it's 50s. interesting to think of like that's Late the 40s. mindset mm-hmm. is like all you know is people who are immediately around you. Yeah. That was your moral compass. But now, and it's interesting that like, and that's why people are so sensitive for others is because now everyone has this giant moral compass of what is right and wrong. Anyway, sorry. It was just a wild no, thought yeah. I had. So, yeah, Glenn, sorry. Go, no, go. One more thing I was going to add. When you say he's alone, he's literally alone. So like his dad moved away to go. He ended up getting remarried. Mom. Yeah, he gets, he gets remarried like six months after. Yeah, he mom graduated. went off. I can't remember what happened to mom, but so he's in his childhood home alone. Like he literally kind of inherits the home because he's 18. Mm. The The younger brother got, um, the mom got custody of the younger brother. So mom and the younger brother move away. Dad moves away. Dahmer's left by himself, 18 I, years I old I heard in the something house. where she like legitimately just left him. Like oh, she could yeah. have taken him or something, but she was like, nah. Interesting. Good. I didn't I'm just hear taking that. the other one. Well, and that's it. Well, and that explains it there because he's 18. Like the dad had to go figure out his own stuff. Like I said, he so kind of he, he kind of was there, kind of wasn't. The mom I was like, I don't want to deal just, with your yeah. crazy crap. So he's eight, <laughs> he's 18, and by <laughs> law, bleach, no one bleach and bones and shit. <laughs> yeah, by law, no one had to take custody of him, and that's yeah. literally what it was. Neither parent took custody of Not him. Yo, he, bud. So dad, talk, dad talk about abandonment. <laughs> that's that's right. Talk about what. I was out right before I was 18, kicked out. I guess in this case, though, he he did, like like Zach said, his dad was trying. Like, he did have somewhat of a good dad. Except but, he left him and then he just leaves him. So, <laughs> <Never ditched>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's, that's not, part of the abandonment. Let's not forget that glaring problem of a father <laughs> just l- abandoning a child at 18 to yeah. go be single. Yep. But it, well, I'm saying it's not abandonment because he's 18, but in the eyes of Jeff, it could be. Yes. Oh, it's yeah. definitely abandonment. Yeah. You're, you're sure you're a, a legal adult, but 18? Which. You're still a kid, man. Honestly, that a lot of that comes into play later on in his well, life. Like Chris just said he moved out at 18, right before. Yeah, and look how messed up he is. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm a, kidding. Lot of his, a lot so of I his issues. Such an old soul. <laughs> yeah. 
a lot of his issues as going on later into his life, he actually claims that, you know, he was frustrated because people kept leaving him. Mm-hmm. That's he wanted people to stay and he would get frustrated. And that was partly his way Don't of put skulls on crosses. You yeah. weird bad. <laughs> he wanted people to stay. He was, was like, no, I don't want any of your juju. You can stay here. <laughs> Black magic. Do you queen. think she could sense he was a bad scene? I mean, I always think I'm sick. I know you're sick. <laughs> well, who knows Jeez. what's not written or documented that they witnessed him doing. Because, exactly. You know, yeah. you never know. What else was he doing with those skulls? Yeah. Let's start right. them. wearing them. So Anyways. he picks up the hitchhiker. <laughs> yeah. 1978, June 1978, picks up this hitchhiker, Stephen uh, Mark Hicks. Um, smash. So basically strangles him with that barbell. This ends up being his first murder. Um, he, um, over the next couple of weeks, he methodically strips the flesh from the bones, smashes the bones, and disposes of the few remains in the backyard. Um, Dahmer said he killed Hicks because he didn't want him to leave. Huh. So, um, Jeez. at least one survivor of a Dahmer attack reported that after he had been in the Dahmer's apartment for a while, voluntarily, he mentioned that he wanted to leave and Jess Free's attitude changed immediately. His voice became panicky and then the attack began. So this is later in life. So he has major issues. So it's like a trigger. Issue. Yes, it's a trigger. People want to leave. He did. Triggers them. You're not gonna leave me. <laughs> well, because like a separation anxiety to the nth degree. Yeah, no joke. Yeah. So stage um, five clinger. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, oh my! Hell. I was gonna say he can't poke holes in the condom and get knocked up to keep him around. So. Yeah, He's don't worry about it. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> um, like you had pointed out earlier, actually says here, friend said he liked to pick up roadkill and take it to a shed behind his house. Um, he'd skin the bodies. He also had a small animal cemetery. There were rumors <laughs> that he killed neighborhood dogs and cats and even mounted the dog's head on a stake. Oh, gosh. Um, now that's where we're all going to feel real sad is the dog. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, yes. The dog. How dare he? Oh. <laughs> Um, so, um, basically to, um, later on when they asked him about his first murder, um, he actually stated that how cool would it be to pick up a hitchhiker and do some stuff to him? Really? Yes. That, that. I think he said too, that the hitchhiker, he was, so he was wearing a shirt like unbuttoned and he saw his open chest and it aroused him. That's yeah. why he picked him up. And then. Um, he was attracted by him, but then the hitchhiker started talking about women, so he knew he couldn't make any sexual moves on him. And so that's why they went back to the house to just have some drinks. But Yeah. So um, December 1978, his dad remarries. And then he, Jeffrey, um, was actually sworn into the Army. Um, after failing to become an MP, he was trained as a medic and assigned to in Germany. Um, in Germany? Yeah, he was inside in Germany as a medic. What's an MP? Military Medical. police. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, uh, anyways, a few years after um, Vietnam, when morale and discipline in the armed forces were poor and drug and alcohol abuse wives was spread. So basically, he's in the army. It wasn't really that difficult to be there because morale's really low. We just got out of Vietnam. We know how big of a disaster that was. Um, especially at the time. Nam. <laughs> Good old Nam. <laughs> um, oh, another thing to kind of add to that, but backing up a tad, he was like a crazy alcoholic. Like he started drinking in like young ages, like hard alcohol, vodka, scotch. That, that was my next statement. Oh, sorry. How <laughs> young are you talking? I don't know how young, but that's it, what it, it mentioned in the army. I want to say he was like 14 yeah. when he started. From what I read, that's it's a good age. That's what they noticed in in the army. Um, he got out of his class clown and pranksterish, um, but people did notice that he was a very heavy drinker. Um, Liver solid at that age made him a <laughs> made him a mean drunk as well. He was a mean drunk. Yeah, he was a mean drunk. How mean? I don't know. Just said he unpleasant and even violent drunk. I'm I'm kidding. He kills people. Oh god! <laughs> yeah. I got gotcha. you. I get you. <laughs> <laughs> that did. That went right over my head. <laughs> no, he was kind of pleasant. 
He just yelled a little bit. <laughs> Uh, March 1981, Dahmer was discharged from the army. Um, honorably. Yes, honorably. Bro. He was honorably discharged? Because they didn't feel he was a threat. Yeah, he was. his drinking had reached the point where he simply didn't function anymore. So he was honorably, not dishonorably yeah. discharged? They just basically let him go. How was that honorable? So it's one of those things. It's one or the other, but he didn't do anything to like. He, he didn't do anything wrong. He just so basically he, drank he just drank too You're much. Drunk. And they just said so. He didn't do anything wrong, You're but he drank drunk. too much. Yeah. It's like getting just fired. That's not the wrong. Um, like he didn't do anything heinous there. Like <laughs> it, he wasn't doing anything illegal. Yeah. Mm. So. Um, October and- 1981. He's arrested for disorderly conduct. Um, because he was drunk. So he gets arrested. I mean, drinking, big, huge issue. Um, August 1982, he was arrested again for disorderly conduct. He actually dropped his pants in public. <laughs> um, by this time, he was living with his grandma um, because she really was the only person who responded to anything with affection towards him. Oh, so that's why he stayed with his grandma. Does so, they happen to mention if it was on his mom's side or dad's side? No. Oh, I was just curious. So uh, fast forward four years, September 1986, um, he was arrested again. So Gosh, three times we have this guy. Yep, three times. More than that. This time he oh. exposed himself while urinating in front of a group of children in Milwaukee. Oh, my God. Get oh, out. How else supposed to urinate? Get. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Wow. Oh, what? Wow. <laughs> I didn't missed it. Said. Wow, that. Wow. Well, you can't just pee through your pants. <laughs> In front of children? No, you don't have to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> that I was a good it. joke. But, that was a good one. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Oh, dear. <laughs> Other versions of the story claim that he was actually masturbating in front of the children. Yeah, that's just, yeah. Cut it off. All right. Oh, my gosh. So... Apparently, the laws were a lot more laws, lenient back yes. then. Laws were a little bit different back then, apparently. Bro, I already read one of these stories. That yeah. If you don't tell it, I'm going to tell it. It pissed um, me off. <laughs> basically, by this time, he's a frequent visitor of gay bars, bathhouses, um, all this stuff. Where um, the devil do you find a bathhouse? I don't know. What back is in a bathhouse? I, I always think of those Asian like thing. Eastern, yeah. Yeah. It's those big baths you go soak. It's like a giant hot tub. Everyone's naked. Bunch of gay people. Well, no. It's no, the, no. Right. The, well, Romans, the, the ones Romans. that he was going oh. to, sounds like. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, just, I, I thought they were popular in more like the The Asia. mafias used them. In a, yeah, in Asia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Hmm. It's almost like a giant steam room and like they go hot tubs like opposing mafias would meet at a bathhouse naked to talk business so that way they knew they were both unarmed is it and uh, yeah. Yeah. in in tokyo drift remember how when han is trying to recruit the american kid and he tells him to go in and get money from the guy with the big old paw the bear on him mm-hmm. isn't that a bathhouse yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 exactly interesting Sounds I, like I something we need to try. I just didn't know there were any <laughs> in America. I'm okay. I'm going to pass. I guess there are back <laughs> at the time there was. Um, a year later after um, he's arrested for, you know, exposing himself to children, um, he actually commits his second murder. And So this, he does, obviously he doesn't get caught for his first. No. Gotcha. No. And this is, this is now September 1986. And that's his, a long. That's almost ten years of first. Itching. Itching. Yep, his first one was seventy eight. Right. So okay. he's he's eight years after the fact. Eight eight or nine years after the fact. Um. So he let's see. So this is the murder of Stephen W. Uh, Tuomi, uh, who was twenty four. Dahmer claimed he woke up in a hotel room and found the victim dead, with no member of doing anything to him. So he bought a big suitcase, transported the body back to his grandma's house, and proceeded oh to dispose of it as much as he had the body, as much as he had of the body of Stephen Hicks. So he basically dismembered it, stripped flesh stripped off the, the bones, skin. all this stuff in his Jeez. grandma's basement. Jeez. Didn't it say he used acid to dissolve the skin? Um, 
yes, he started learning how to use acid to start dissolving and all that stuff. He used it for many things. Um, so yeah, this was this was nine years between the first and the second murders. Um, Gross. So wait, how? Sorry, how do we have account of all this? Is this stuff that he is pleaded guilty to, or like, is this is from a journal a, entry? From what I understand, is he was very open about all this. Really, when he finally yeah. got caught. I feel a lot when he, of them when they get caught are just like, sure, I'm gonna die anyways. Well, he, besides Ted Bundy. No, he, he shared a he lot later, of very end. Oh, He later claims bits. in jail that, yeah, he, what he did was wrong, and he apologized for all of it, and he said, I'm a very sick man, but he was very open Gosh. in jail to hmm. a lot of this. Yeah, he was. I don't know how I take that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> um, so like you had said, Cam, it says nine years past... Uh, between the first and second murders, in a sense, this was so long. Um, the time was so long that the second murder could be treated mentally as another first murder. He spent years working up to it. So hmm. getting an itch again, working up to the second murder, um, learning how to approach men, how to drug them. Sounds you know, like Dexter. What's too much, what's not enough, mm-hmm. all that Gosh. stuff. How would he drug them? Um, a lot of times it was... Um, like date rate stuff, just powdered stuff oh. and drinks and stuff like Roofies. that. Roofies. Roofies. What the hell is this roofaloom? <laughs> <laughs> Why do they call it a roofie? <laughs> Why don't they call it floories? <laughs> floories. Um, January 1988, um, James Doxtitter, who was 14 years old, uh. was killed. Dahmer offered him money to pose nude for photos, took oh. him back to his grandma's house. After sex, Granny. <laughs> she Dahmer, bingo that much? <laughs> must have. After sex, Dahmer drugged and strangled him. Um, by now, he is using the powder of using ass, uh, the pattern of using acid and crushing force to destroy the remains. <laughs> what? What? You're laughing at a very inappropriate. I was going to say. <laughs> I know. Well, it was your misspeak. Misspeak. You said the power power of ass, <laughs> and then you corrected yourself. <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. It's true. The power of it. Gosh, that's why I was trying not to laugh because you you were like power of ass, pa- powder of acid. Anyway, um, is that what you said? Powder? Crushing, crushing power. No. The acid. power of acid. acid and the crushing force to destroy the remains. Hmm. Um, May 24th, 1988. So that is his third victim, James Zoxer's third victim. March 24th, a couple months later, he got his fourth victim, Richard Guerrero, 25. Came back to Dahmer's grandmother's house for nude photos again oh after gosh. sex. Seriously, where's Dahmer Granny? drugged and strangled the victim. So he se- probably also drugged Granny. Yeah. If you think about it, probably uh, slipped or something, yeah. and she's out for the night. Mm-hmm. That's true. Um, September 1988, um, Dahmer moved into his own place. He offered $50 to a 13-year-old to pose nude, gave him drugged coffee, and fondled him. The boy actually escaped, though. Oh, my gosh. And Dahmer was arrested. Um, basically, it from here on... From what they can tell is he's lost all control. Dahmer there, yeah, there's just there's no control over any of it anymore. So wait, they arrested him. Then what happened? Just arrested. That's it? Like that's the end? That's when he got arrested the last time? Or was he let go? No. January 1989. Are you kidding me? So a 13-year-old drugged, naked. Molested. 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 The guy walks. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry, I'm getting pissed off. You're yeah. getting ahead of yourself. Hold All on. All right. You better freaking drop January 1989. So a few months later, he's actually convicted of second degree sexual assault and enticing a child for immoral purposes. Um, sentence on May 23rd to five years and three years sentences to be served concurrently. Um, he actually served 10 months and they let him out. On good behavior? I don't know if it was on good behavior, but then he had five years probation. What the hell is going on in the 80s, man? He is given eight years, and he only serves 10 months. Seriously, what is going on in the 80s? This is just like freaking Epstein. Yeah. Remember, he was, I think he was even only like two years in jail, and he left after like two months. 
And he wasn't even in jail. He could leave all day. Yeah, he could leave all day. Oh, yeah. my God. Special well, I mean, privileges. it's all these guys, right? Yeah. Same with uh, that other guy, the other guy that killed all the women. Bundy. Bundy? Bundy? Oh, my god. Well, gosh. he escaped from... He, he convinced him to basically let him, like... He kept escaping. He wasn't yeah, let he go. Kept yeah, he a lawyer for he himself. He was let go He was convincing the them to not watch him as much as they should have. Yeah. Still. Yeah. He's in yeah. a library. He's jumping out of library. He's doing all that stuff. Well, they let him right, go on some suspicious orders ground. before, right. and then, the yeah. Um, it's garbage. For charges. So March 25th, before he's actually sentenced, because uh, so he was sentenced on May 23rd. Um, March 25th, Anthony Sears, who's 24, was last seen alive. Dahmer met him at a club, so apparently in between his sentencing, they're letting oh him... Oh, my gosh. He's, he's walking around still. So he must have made bail, something, walking around still. With what? Um, Dahmer what met him at a club. What state was this in? Is this in Milwaukee still? Yes. Freaking ridiculous, Milwaukee. Yes. Shame on you. Um, oh, just wait. <laughs> oh, my um, gosh. Basically took him back to his grandma's house. After sex, he drugged Sears and murdered him. Sears' painted skull was actually recovered from Dahmer's apartment after his arrest in 1991. Say that again. Painted? Painted skull. Painted skull. Oh, painted skull. Yes. So he kept his skull. So here we are, March 1989. And when he was arrested Bro, in 19... 19- we were alive. Yeah, we yeah. were yeah. alive. 1989. Yeah. All right. When he We've was been arrested... Alive for a bit. He, he started at... Well, two years. He started mm-hmm. in 86. Yeah. He started in 78. I guess you're just saying it now and, yeah, and a few of the things he's said already we've been alive for yeah so i just anyways, realized 89 i'm like oh so i was on the earth so he <laughs> he holds on to his skull basically doesn't let it go holds on to that oh my um gosh. we are in 1990 now wait wait what was that last statement on 89 that was just the the, the last skull the thing. skull okay. yeah the skull thing so oh my gosh. um anthony sears if i remember right that was his Sixth victim, fifth, fifth or sixth victim. I think. Wow. So he's he's up to there. Uh, May 29th, ninth, nineteen eighty or nineteen ninety. Sorry. So he has now served his ten months. Gets released. So May he's convicted. So what is it? Uh, March. March he gets out. And then March of nineteen ninety he gets out. By May of nineteen ninety he meets Ricky Beeks, who is thirty three. That was the last time he was seen alive. Dahmer met him at a club and offered him money to pose for nude pictures. Oh drugged and strangled him and had sex with the body. With the body? Yes. They're gross. Yeah. Yeah. This victim's skull was also recovered from his apartment and with, uh, added with his arrest at a later time. How old was Beeks? 33. 33. Mm. June 1990, so a month later, Edward W. Smith, 28, was killed. Wait, 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 wait. You said he was arrested. Yeah, so he was arrested Mar- uh, May of 1989. Well, but, oh, I thought you said he was arrested again after, so March 90, no, so, then so May 90. 1989, so in between him getting arrested and getting sentenced, he kills Anthony Sears. Yeah, I got that. And then, then he serves his 10 months. He serves his 10 months. Kills this other guy. Gets out of jail two months later, kills Ricky Beeks. Okay. And then a month later, June 1990... He meets Edward Smith, who was 28, kills him again, met him at a bar, offered him money for sex and pictures. After sex, Smith was drugged and strangled. Dahmer took some pictures during the process of the dismembering of the body. Oh, my God. So as he's dismembering him, snapping pictures left and right. Um... So September, so a few months later, er meets Ernest Miller, who's 24, it's the last time he was seen alive. Met Dahmer in front of a bookstore. Dahmer offered him money to come home with him. After sex, Dahmer drugged him and cut his throat. Took pictures of the body and dismembered it, putting the biceps in the freezer. Um, he bleached the skeleton and painted the skull, which was in his apartment as well. So now he's up to three skulls in his apartment. Um, Ernest two biceps Miller, in the freezer. Huh? And two biceps in the freezer. Biceps in the freezer. Um, Ernest Miller, I have lost count now. I want to say he's the ninth, tenth victim he's up to now. Wow. Um, so September 24th, not even a month later, meets David C. Thomas. Dahmer met him on the street and offered him money to come home with him. Again, drugs him, 
murders him, this time without sex, but took pictures as he dismembered the body. So how, how was he disposing of these bodies? Just acid. the acid? Acid. Acid. Um, melts the skin, crushes the bones. And then he the grinds bones. the bones. He grinds the bones. Keeps he was he sawing wants. them. He was doing this stuff. Um, there was, so in the apartment he was at, the next door neighbor lady, she actually called the police multiple times, um, complaining about the stink, complained to the, the, so the hard thing is too, is where he lived. They called it, um, uh, what was it? Um, drug, drug street or whatever. Basically it's a low income apartment housing where, People who've been convicted, you know, drugs, all this stuff. That's just where they are. Um, but anyway, she complains about it. She's even talked to him. I can't, you know, what about the stink? And he said, oh, I'm so sorry. I really like pork chops or I really like this meat. My freezer broke. The meat went bad. I threw it away. I'm sorry. That was always his excuse. Well, acid has a distinct odor, too. When you oh, it's, yeah. It smells like rotten but he eggs. Would, right. He would basically Sulfur. keep them. He had a huge... You know, what, 20 gallon, 30 gallon, whatever, big old vat vat of just acid that he would put these bodies in and just seal it and then let him. Can you imagine you're that old lady, you find this out all this time, you've been smelling dead bodies? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. We're in 1991 now, March 7th. Um, Curtis Strotter, 18, last seen alive. Uh, Dahmer picked him up at the bus stop, offering him money to come home with him. Drug Strotter and strangled him after sex, taking pictures of the dismemberment of the body. The skull, unpainted, was recovered. So now he has four skulls in his apartment. Real quick. So at this point, is there anything going out in the news or anything that there is a serial killer at large? Missing people. That's about it. So, the, But the thing is, is with who, who he's targeting is, and I, I should have mentioned this earlier, who he's targeting is... Gay black men hmm. is, is basically the majority of who he's targeting. That's so um, interesting that like they didn't even have like a points bulletin or like a warning or like because yeah. even Ted Bundy had like the type, yeah. right? Yeah. The, the blonde female. This guy obviously has a type. So it's like these people all have something in common in the same region. It doesn't sound like he's but moving. So the hard thing like, is you're you're in the late 80s, early 90s. You know, you're, you're dealing with AIDS. The internet's around. But you're dealing with AIDS. You're dealing with gay people. I mean, it's... I guess my point back is... Back then, it was like, you're gay, more, stay away from me. It was more... Was it, what's the word I'm looking for? Taboo to yeah, talk about. Yeah, it was more taboo it, to talk about. I guess about. my the, point is, is, I guess, yeah. The, the people he's targeting, I mean, I, I believe even some of them were there from somewhere else. Like, they had really no Foreigners. connection anywhere. But how did he vet that? You know what I mean? Like, there's no way he vetted them if they're picking if he's pe- picking people up at bus stops and, and nightclubs. Well, except that. Where's the bus coming from? Right. Yeah. Well, I think it's more, were they actually gay or were they actually just needing the money? And when he comes up and offers it, yeah. that could be it, too. But, but he's I mean, like, desperate. But yeah. Ted Bundy roamed, man. He right. went all over the U.S. And they had a points bulletin out for him. This guy stayed in the same region. He's got an express link. He just... Bus stops coming well, it's, through. Yeah, it's you hear. There's other serial killers who've done similar things. You find people that no one's gonna miss. Well, and that's the hard thing too. Is he's also in an area like I said. He's in. I wish I could remember this the state name. Is in Milwaukee. Name. Yeah, and I wish I could. They could. I could remember the exact thing that they called it. But he's he's in a druggy area. Like he's Skid in a, Row in a yeah, kind of type thing yeah. where some of these people are transients. Like they're in and out. Like. There's no record of them. There's no record of them. So basically all that's coming up is just missing papers of this person's missing. So people probably go there to get a fix. So they're not telling people they're going there. Exactly. Um, Because, yeah, in my head, I was just thinking, it's like, wouldn't you like know like, hey, this weird guy's offering me money. Other people have kind of disappeared. I probably shouldn't trust a complete stranger. But I guess, yeah, with that, that makes sense. But even Mm -hmm. still, like even if they're going out for a fix and no one... There's every at least some of the people that he's killed have got to have family that are like, where are they? You know, putting out missing persons. People, detectives up there are just lazy. Well, here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. They're so, not connecting the dots. One of the kids. Hindsight's one of the, always. One of the kids earlier. Um, the one of the I think it was the 14 year old or the 13 year old. Um, 
That one would be like big yeah, check mark. Big red so, flag. Yeah. Well, here's the thing though. So um he and they actually watching the series on Netflix, they actually have a voice recording of one of the ladies calling into the cops to talk to him about it. So the 13 year old kid gets loose, but by this time, so remember how I told you about the dad told him about how you could experiment with the brain and put acid on it. Yeah. And it basically allows the body to still do things, but the person's like just not there. So the 13 year old kid, um, or one of them anyways, um, the kid wanted to leave and he didn't want him to leave. And he thought that by maybe drilling into his head mm-hmm. and dropping acid onto the brain would basically make this kid so brain dead that he could make him a zombie to stay with him. But the body would be alive, but the brain would be dead. Yeah. So, so, so on that note, like that's one of the things I found here. It was, it was Errol Lindsay was the one he did it to, a teenager. But then he also did it to another teenager named Conorak Synthasmphone. That's a weird name. But uh, basically, so when he did it to the first kid, the kid survived. And he, he reportedly per- woke did- up and was like, I have a headache before Dahmer strangled him to death. Oh, gosh. Then the second guy, Conorak, same thing. Drilled a hole in his head, poured acid on oh, his brain. Oh, yeah. I, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's and actually then, coming up. I thought it was oh, one of okay. the other kids. So... So real quick, um, so Curtis Slaughter, um, it actually says here that he actually was experimenting on this one, if he wasn't on the other ones. Oh. Um, this is at least the third sequence of events Dahmer experimented with. Earlier it had been <clears throat> sex, drugs, then murder. At least once he tried drugs, murder, sex. At least once. This time it was drugs, sex, then murder. So drug them. Basically, when they're out, have sex with them and then murder them. Mm. So, Errol Lindsay, mm-hmm. 19, um, Dahmer met him on the street and offered him money to come home with him. He drugged him, strangled him, had sex with the body, kept his skull as well. Uh, but that there, was all after he drilled a hole in his head and poured acid in there. No. So, this one um, is 14-year-old Conorick, Sinem, Ooh, whatever. Yep. So... In front of a mall, he met him in front of a mall, offered him money to pose for nude pictures. Um, After the pictures, he drugged him, then went out for beer. The boy escaped naked into the street. With a hole in his head. With a hole in his head. And acid. And acid. So he is just basically foaming at the mouth. He's on the stoop of this apartment building. The neighbor lady is the one who calls the police. Well, he gets found on the street corner by three women. Yes. The neighbor and the daughters. The 14-year-old? Yes, the 14-year-old does. By the naked, neighbor and the daughters. With a so hole in his head and acid. Oh, yes, naked, hole in his head, acid. He's delirious, doesn't know where he's at. He's basically claiming of a headache. He just looks... Honestly, he looks drunk is the issue. They so, don't see the hole in his head? Other than the bloody hole in his head. That's the part I don't like... Hold on, hold on. Okay. There's explanations for it all, and it is absolutely disgusting. Yeah. Um, Neighbors called the police, but Dahmer convinced them that he and the boy were lovers and had a quarrel. He hit his head, and that's why he is bleeding. The boy's 14. Hold on. We're just all getting angry. I can tell. I want an answer. Gosh, <laughs> give me a minute to explain it all. I'm sorry. Oh, it's not you. <laughs> yeah, we're just, just it's the safe. story. I get it. Um, police apparently unconcerned um, that he was basically still too drugged to confirm or deny the story returned him to Dahmer. Oh my gosh. Dahmer had claimed that they were lovers. They got in a quarrel. This kid was drunk. The lady said, are you sure? He looks 14 and he says he's not. The police officer says he's not 14. He's fine. They give him back to Dahmer. Yes. Dahmer convinced him that he was older. They give him back to Dahmer. They go up to the apartment with Dahmer again and they check out his apartment. He lays the boy back on the sofa and, and he's like, and the apartment reeks of rotting yes, flesh. Yes. And the police are like, you know, he's like, I'm so sorry. You know, and the whole time Dahmer's like, 
in the show, it kind of ex puts it out there that Dahmer used being gay to kind of take people away because like it's a taboo thing. So he's telling the people, yeah, sorry, you know, it was a gay things, you know, we were doing gay stuff together. And the police are like, okay, well, do you have them under control? And he's like, yeah. And he even shows pictures that he has of them together that he had taken. Oh my gosh. And the police are like, oh, okay. So convinced that these two were lovers, that the kid is over How 14. How do you have pictures? Because he, he takes pictures of everything. He takes pictures of them yeah, having but, sex. Bro, one hour. It's all it takes. One hour <laughs> no, photo. It's, he's it's, bopping down no, the wall. It's, it's, it's the Polaroids. It's Polaroids. Uh, yeah. oh. The instant pictures. So um, basically, so, so the, police, the police leave. The police are convinced that here he is. He's just drunk. He so convinces even the them. side. Okay. The, the, so frustrated. The Every age, officer all should of have that, resigned. Age, all that aside, even if he said we had a quarrel, he's bleeding. And he's naked. It's like, what about domestic abuse? You like, what remember, about just... man, this is the early 90s. Oh, my God. Things we're are not that stupid. God. Things are so much different now, and we know so much more now than we did back then, unfortunately. You <sighs> would think, okay, we're just going to take him for the night. Also. You guys separate. You're in the middle of yeah. a drug area. The last thing these police want to do is take these people in and have to do the paperwork and oh do all this stuff. It's, 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 the it's, it's, it's lazy police work. Lazy it's literally it's lazy police work. Garbage. Later on, um, so basically afterwards, jobs. the police left. Um, he has sex with the body, took pictures, and dismembered him. Kept his skull as well. Oh, my gosh. Um, Basically, Gross. with the full details of the incident became known, mild disciplinary action was taken against the officers involved. <laughs> mild. The department was also sued for a large amount of money. This is Better later on be. when they find out. So later on, one of the neighbors actually calls the officers and says, hey, I'm calling about this incident that happened early. And goes, yes, I was the officer there. And she goes, I'm very concerned that that was a 14-year-old kid, like a kid. And he's like, no, ma'am, it wasn't a kid. And she's like, are you sure? Because he looked... Yeah. really young like he looked like a minor She's an officer they on the netflix series they actually have the actual voice recording of this and he's like no ma'am he was he was an adult it's like, he was how? Fine. How, how do, do you, you know? know yeah where's the id lazy police work unfortunately um wouldn't it as an officer wouldn't it kind of eat at you it's like okay you stop and think like what if it's a kid and i just left a child with this man that Oh, oh my god. I guarantee you it didn't eat at him. They didn't care until Where's later the parents on. at too. Oh, I'm so I'm yeah, so this kid was there's at the so many holes. This kid was at the mall. Like for all we know, I mean it's Shut I up. guess it, unless the whole thing happened within a it. matter of hours. Wow. What? Wow. I miss it. I keep missing it's always it. like someone wow. has to do it every time and it's always an adverb. Right. Cam well, said there's so many holes. I did. I did. <laughs> we got mine. Right. Leave it to Austin. Ram into a wall. The, I'm not there right now. I'm so pissed off right I now. Know. <laughs> no, but like I wasn't it, saying it as a joke. I know. Was, <laughs> I know. I didn't in even this, pick up on it because I'm like. <laughs> in this case, I, I mean, it doesn't does it, it doesn't give a time frame, right? So from the time he picks him up at the mall to the incident with the police, all that, it's this all within been days. No. It, it sounds was, like it's all within a day. It's the day. same day. It's like the same day, pretty so much. So parents are probably th assuming he's at the mall with oh, friends. Oh, well, the street lights are still on. He'll okay, be home this later. this is all in that same day. I mean, it's, it's That's literally he does this all in one day. Huh. So you, you got to you gotta imagine, like, you know, I so between that kid <laughs> and his next victim, it's a matter of seven days. Yeah. Jeez. So, I mean, it's, it's one week period. So by the time... You know, the kid comes up missing. You're putting around missing posters. For all you know, you know, that type of area they live in, this kid could have just ran away. Right. You know? Um, there, there, And the, the kid had no ID on him. So police, yeah, he was butt-ass naked. Yeah, police couldn't find any ID, so they just took his word for it, mm. that they were lovers. Um, See, I don't mean to be gross. I don't want this to sound bad, but a, a naked 14 year old body is going to look different than an adult's 14 or naked body. Wouldn't you think? Yeah. I mean, I know 14 year olds are starting to go through puberty and so they're going to have some but, of those things. But I feel like here's the thing. Can you can you tell the difference 
between a 14 year old and an 18 year old if you're two, I guess. if it's if it's midnight one o'clock in the morning it's dark outside. I, oh, this he, was he all take, at night? Like that. Was yeah. it at when night? That, yeah, that was at night. When the kid was found, well, it was I mean, at that night. lends a little bit of an okay. explanation to it. Yeah, but it still the, doesn't explain still, why the cops didn't just take him in for the night. Lazy yeah. cops. That doesn't work. explain. They were, they no, also, it does, though. It, like, it's it, literally, it, it, literally garbage, that, it, I mean, garbage. They were humans. also, from, what, from being understandable of it, too, they were also a little homophobic because they made jokes about having to go disinfect themselves and oh delouse themselves like, now. Okay, now, just because I have to ask, and it's curiosity, M- Michigan, were they known for being racist in the area? Michigan? Yeah, Milwaukee, right? You said Milwaukee? Is that Michigan? <laughs> Why is everyone looking at Chris? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Milwaukee's in Michigan. Maker. I thought it was in oh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin, yeah. Wisconsin. I'm sorry. Like, yeah. Yeah. Was, sorry, no, I was going to say, I thought it was in Wisconsin. <laughs> want to be wrong the cheese place i know it's up by chicago sorry but. wisconsin yeah is that an area known to be racist because i'm wondering this boy if he's been targeting black males is this a black 14 year old boy no because the people who found him was black as well the lady who found yeah him. but the officers the officer about, yeah. oh the yeah. officers i think it was a matter of i like i Sounds like it was more the gay side of it. I think it's more the gay side of it. But I'm saying it could be a twofer, right? Oh, he's he's black and maybe it it really just sounds like garbage policemen. They're in a garbage area, so they really don't care what happens. Yes, like the crime spree. They're numb to it because of the crime spree so high. If they really reported everything they came up against, Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. There's no excuse, but. Um, May yeah, 20- I'd, be a, I'd be a great detective. I have a feeling I'd be a great mm. one. <laughs> <laughs> May 24th, uh, Tony Sleuth. Hughes, 31. Mm. Freaking. Um, reportedly, Hughes and Dahmer had known each other for two years by writing. Hughes went deaf and mute. Um, Dahmer offered him $50 to come home with him to pose for nude pictures. Drug, murdered. Same story every time. Yep, drug, murdered. This time without sex, though. Um, he, he kept his skull as well. Deaf and mute, huh? Yeah. June 30th. Um, so June 30th, um, Matt Turner, 20. What year? What year? We're still 1991. Wow. Yep. Like he said, things just picked up right after. So Jeez. we're 19. So June 30th, 1991, uh, Matt Turner, 20 year old, last seen alive. This time they met in Chicago at the bus station after a gay pride parade. Dahmer offered him money to pose nude, drugged him, strangled him with a strap. Now, now this one, he's traveling. So does that mean he was at like a hotel? Uh, it doesn't say. I'm assuming. Because that's in Illinois. I'm assuming they met yeah. at, a, at a bus station after a gay pride parade and they. It's only a couple hours back. away, though. Yeah. Went back, met him at the bus station, and just went back to Milwaukee together or whatever. Hmm. So. Um, after cutting the body up, Dahmer put the head in the freezer and the rest in a barrel of acid he had attained. The whole head. Um, like, so not just the skull, the whole head. Huh? Yeah. In the, the whole head in the freezer. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, this is just, the whole thing is, I just can't wrap my head around it. July 6th. Um, Damn it. <laughs> Jeremiah, Jeremiah Weinberger, 23. Um, they met at a gay bar where Dahmer offered him money. To, so they met at a Chicago, uh, in Chicago at a gay bar uh, where Dahmer offered him money to come back to Milwaukee. Um, this murder is very unusual in the fact that the victim was not murdered until the day after he came home with Dahmer. Oh, when man. he indicated that he wanted to leave, Dahmer drugged him, strangled him, and dismembered him. Taking pictures of the process, like the last victim, his head went into the freezer, his body into the acid. Gosh, dang. Um, July 15th, Jeff was fired from his job at a chocolate factory. Um, oh, fun fact. He also took one of those heads to the, the, his work. Oh, that's right. So oh one time gosh, he what took if you're it to eating? his work and he put it in his locker. That's right. He kept it in his locker. That's right. Because he wanted to keep a piece of him with him. Yep. That's right. What if it got went in the chocolate? <laughs> That's yeah. what I, that was my first thought, <laughs> actually. Um, Which so chocolate factory was it? Never. It's like the twisted again. story of Willy Wonka, uh, Hershey. where Willy Wonka was putting all the kids yeah, in the f- in the candy. Anyway, sorry. All right. Here you go. This yeah. is Illinois. Is you think Hershey, it, you, Illinois? You think it's bad? 
Oh no. This is, it gets worse. What? Yes. Are you kidding me? I'm dead serious. How? Sorry, I was I doing know. a little bit of research. So Milwaukee to Chicago really isn't far. It's only an hour and a half. Yeah. Not too I bad. thought it had been yeah. at least five hours. Oh, we know. He's we working at the Hershey factory, huh? So the same Hershey, day Illinois. he's fired yeah. from, it's called the Ambrosia Chocolate Factory. Ambrosia. Um, mm, never same, heard of it. Same day <laughs> that he's fired, Oliver Lacey goes missing. They met on a street and went back to Dahmer's apartment for body rubs. Lacey was then drugged and strangled. Dahmer had sex with the body before dismembering it. He put the head in the refrigerator... Yeah. And the heart in the freezer to eat it later. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yep. So this is still ninety-one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, We're holy. literally talking now like five or six victims all within a month and a half of each other. So holy crap! They're they're all going back to this house. They're all going back to this apartment, and it reeks of dead bodies. Yes. And the lady next to the neighbors have called and complained, and nobody's doing anything about it because he has a story every time. That's what. Oh my god. They don't. They don't care. Is the that's sad why. Yeah. That's why now. That's at least here in Utah. I know that now it's law that if you if you call the cops, they do a what do they a call wellness it? check. Wellness, wellness, wellness check, check yeah. every time. Yeah. Yeah. Kay. That is crazy. Um, coming towards the end. Um. July 22nd, 1991. Shortly after midnight, Tracy Edwards, who was 32, escaped from Dahmer with one hand in a handcuff and flagged down a police car. He led the cops back to Dahmer's apartment. They found photos of a dismembered victims and body parts in the refrigerator and freezer. Um, shortly, the sight of crews in biohazard protection suits taking evidence out of Dahmer's apartment was televised all over the world. The suits were necessary because of the sm smell decay in the apartment and because of the acid in the barrel. Right. Where was Dahmer? He was in his apartment. So oh. he takes this guy back to his apartment, does his normal thing, gets friendly with him. The guy tries to leave. He freaks out. Um, basically, this guy, um, it actually says right here, um, offers him money to pose, drugs to knock them out. Um, Tracy Edward claimed that he was not offered money, but that he only went to Dahmer's apartment for some beers before going out again. Um, cause they met at a bar. Um, basically, um, Edwards was drugged, um, but he didn't lose consciousness cause he, um, in the betrayal in the show and I don't know how true it is. He noticed something was wrong with the drink and didn't drink at all. And so didn't knock him unconscious completely. Um, basically, let's see, um, afterwards, um, he basically took him into the bedroom. This guy fought Dahmer off. Um, Dahmer tried to get on top of him or whatever, and he actually fought him off and then escaped out. Tried to handcuff him at one point, but he escaped out, found the police. They came back. Dahmer didn't go anywhere. didn't run. He just sat in his apartment. The guy led him back to the apartment. Police showed up, basically wanted the keys to the handcuff. He said, it's in my drawer in my room. Um, he's trying to get away with it. He's basically trying to act calm because he knows if he acts freaked out, they're going to think something weird's going on. Guy opens up the drawers, discovers the photos, looks at him and goes, these are real. And then they end up handcuffing Dahmer from there. And then that's when they get everybody in there. They end up finding all this stuff. Um... Basically, so now we, so that was July of 1991. Um, so they go through his thing. Um, they found, they found five skulls in his house, in the apartment. Um, they found, I want to say it was close to three skeletons worth of bones. Um, there was multiple bodies in the acid, the vat of acid. <laughs> And multiple stages of decomposition, decomposition um, that they had taken out. Um, January 14th, so we're six months later, Dahmer entered a plea of guilty, but insane, in 15 of the 17 murders. 17 people that he murdered. Holy cow. Um, by a 10 to 2 majority vote, a jury found Dahmer to be sane in each murder. Testimony from defense... Um, said that everything was extremely gruesome. 
One expert testified that Dahmer periodically removed body parts of his victims from the freezer and ate them. Mm-hmm. Another testified that this was a lie um, that they made about himself to seem insane. But they have actual... There was parts of the bodies from the freezer that were taken out that were cut off and as taken if, away. As I if portioned. none of the other stuff doesn't deem right. him insane. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. they didn't want him to be insane because they wanted, you know... So, Death penalty. Um, February 17th, Dahmer was sentenced to 15 consecutive life terms. At the sentencing, Dahmer right. read a prepared statement in which he expressed sorrow for the pain he had caused. And this is, on quotes, this is from him. He states, I knew I was sick or evil or both. Now I believe I was sick. The doctors have told me about my sickness and now I have some peace. I know how, I know now how much it. harm I have caused. I tried to do the best I could after the arrest to make amends. So he, <laughs> by him making amends as he came forward about everything. No. Was honest. No. Was truthful. Um, I know now I will be in prison for the rest of my life. I know that I will have to turn to God to help me get through each day. I should have stayed with God. I tried and failed and created a holocaust. Uh, thank God there will be no more harm that I can do. I believe that only the Lord Jesus Christ can save me from my sins. Um, Jeez. he later to plead guilty to aggravated murder in Ohio in the death of his first victim, Stephen Hicks. Um, and then he was also sentenced to life in prison without parole for that as well. Um, it's also should point out that he was never put up for, um, death or death penalty, death penalty because Wisconsin, Right. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. state, yeah. That's the Milwaukee. <laughs> Milwaukee, uh, Wisconsin. They don't believe in the death sentence. Get out. So it was never put up. Friggin never, idiots. never an option. Hmm. They don't believe a never an option. Either. He Dahmer actually was even quoted by saying that he believed that he should have been put up for the death sentence, <laughs> but because of where everything took place, it was not an option. Dude, that's when you table. start believing <laughs> in it, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, sh- I should definitely be on the death penalty. Let's, you know what? Let's uh, let's let's tweak things this this go round. Do you think so, it'd be worse to? be put to death or to have to stay in a oh, little cell 1000 percent to stay in a cell oh, yeah. i right. think it'd be worse to stay oh, in yeah. a cell yeah yeah but they shouldn't like have luxuries or everything you no. should be stuck to a simple cell you so, shouldn't be allowed to talk february 17th is when Shot he's called <laughs> right uh february 17th he is um so that's when he's sentenced um basically life without parole november 28th 1994 he was actually murdered in prison Oh, dang. Uh, which I thought was, I always thought he got the death penalty. But then, no, he was murdered in prison. Said Dahmer, two other inmates were assigned to clean the staff bathroom at the Columbia Correctional Institute Gymnasium in Wisconsin. Uh, guards left them alone to do their work for about 20 minutes, starting at about 7.50 a.m. Uh, Dahmer was discovered. He was unconscious and his head and face were bloody. Um, he ended up dying on the way to the hospital from multiple full sh- skull fractures and brain trauma. Yes! I love that it was slow. A bloody broom handle was found near Dahmer, but a broom is probably not sturdy enough to inflict the damage that killed him. Reports in December, um, later that, the, about a month later when everything came forward and all that stuff, um, that he was actually struck with a steel bar stolen from the prison weight room. Wonderful. Like... How he killed his first barbell yeah. full circle. Yep, full circle. Did those other guys get out on a good, good? So <laughs> not always. Um, one of the other good. two inmates yeah. in the area with Dahmer was also attacked. His name was Jesse Anderson. Um, he was pronounced dead at the hospital as well. What did he um, died a for? A couple of days later. Same guy. Um, he was convicted of stabbing and beating his wife to death in 1992 and was serving a life term. Hmm. Wait, Third, are these these are the guys that killed so Dahmer? This, these no, this was another guy who was working with Dahmer at the time in oh. cleaning that facility. He died because he was um, he was attacked as well. Um, the third inmate in the work party is 25 year old Christopher Scaver, a convicted murderer, reportedly taking anti psychopathic medicine or anti psychotic medication or whatever. Uh, Scarver murdered a coworker when he was angry at his boss. The boss got away. Scarver claimed that his boss was a racist, and there was been speculation that Scarver, who was black, wanted revenge for all the wrongs Dahmer and Anderson, both white. Remember, Dahmer's 
point people were black gay mm-hmm. men. Um, Anderson tried to blame two fictitious black men for murdering his wife during a mugging. It's been pointed out that a desire for publicity or status may have also been a motive. Um, so basically this guy, Scarver, um, he was the one that killed both of them. He's getting revenge for the other black guys. He was getting revenge for the other black guys. Um, Scarver said to have delusions. Uh, he is Christ. He has been in psychiatric observation and treatment several times with diagnosis of bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. Um, he was found guilty of the murder, though, and sent to prison. A jury apparently did not believe he was insane. So he didn't so, get let out on good behavior. No. <laughs> he should have been. Yep. Even being a little he's psychotic. So, so <laughs> he's, he's a psychopath <laughs> who got sent to prison for killing a co-worker. And then while he's in prison, he takes the opportunity and kills Dahmer. Good riddance. Um, in a way, I, I applaud him. All right. And that's it. Sorry, that was longer than I anticipated. Yeah. But I mean, Here's another weird fact. He apparently was obsessed with Star Wars and The Exorcist 3. Yes. He In would, fact, he loved the, now the I Emperor. Hate Star Wars. <laughs> Jay. Well, he, he loved the evil of, of the Emperor, essentially. And it hyped him up. He would even wear yellow contacts. Mm-hmm. Um, is that why in the picture dun, for the dun, Netflix dun, thing dun, he's wearing yellow dun, contacts? Dun, dun, yep. Dun, 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 dun. The um the last guy who actually got away, um, so part of his thing is Jeff would take them into the bedroom, and they would watch Exorcist three. Why the third one? Because it focuses on a horif- the horrific exploits of a supernatural serial killer. Yep. Oh. So they would get. I to just a don't certain- know how you make it through ten minutes in that room with that smell. Right. Well, that's that's what caused that last guy. He wanted to leave. He started seeing. He walked in. He saw a satanic ritual Bible. Wanted to leave, and he saw also saw another few things. And then he's like, "Hey, man, I think I'm gonna go." And that's and Jeff's. That's his trigger. And he's like, "No, no, no, no." And that's when he tried to handcuff him. Freaked him out. They go into the bed, and you know he ends up tackling him, and they go into the bedroom. And by this time, what actually saved his life is he started to entice Jeff. Started try to seduce him a little bit and all this stuff, and then was able to catch him off guard and beat him, and escaped. Dude, he also he was gonna build a an altar out of the remains that he'd kept. He yeah. even had like a drawing of how he wanted it to look, like a black table with like skulls on it and skeletons around it, where he could relax. Gross. <laughs> Do as a freak. Do so, as yoga. Yeah, seventeen Gosh. victims, and you got to think. 10 of them were all done within like six it's months insane. of each other. Wow. Something oh like gosh. that. Six months to maybe a year of each other, something like that. Jeez. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ooh. Well, and with that's that, let's call say, it a podcast because this is. That's heavy, man. This is I done. don't like it. <laughs> yeah, he like sucked. It. If I could go oh. back in time, I'd punch him in the face as a, you know, as a baby. <laughs> my jaw hurts because I kept clenching it. <laughs> I was so pissed when I was Dude. like, Ugh. "That's like you remember you just seen that?" Uh, I sent a video a while ago where these guys like they made a a time machine out of their washer. And he's like, "You can go anywhere in this." He's like, "Where do you want to go?" He's like, "Well, I've all, like I can take out Hitler." He's like. You really, really? You can go take out a baby? Yeah. Like, oh yeah, dude, baby Hitler, I'll punch him in the face. <laughs> it's like, send it's me out. Hard to kill so baby. he goes, <laughs> he goes, and he comes back. He's like, done. Surprisingly easy. <laughs> Surprisingly easy to kill an infant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is that the same one where then they walk outside <laughs> and there's <laughs> Jews? Like, like, a lot of Whoa. Jews. <laughs> so many Jews. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the other one too where they Deadpool, right? Yeah. Deadpool was going to go kill baby Hitler. Hitler, and then he's like, I can't kill you. Do you remember that? He's like, you just needed some love. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody Gosh. goes dark and sadistic. It's like, just raise him to be right. <laughs> right? Just raise him in a loving family. So, oh, yeah. The hard thing is, too, like you guys pointed out many a times, how many times was this guy in... Caught. Caught. In possession. I well, mean, he was arrested, what, four times then? Uh, three, three times. Three for drunk and disorderly or whatever. And yeah. then I thought there was a fourth time. Well, three arrests not. and then one time caught by the but police. But they didn't do anything. Took him up. Yeah. The police yeah. even took him back to his apartment and nothing. 
Yep. Here, here's your indecent 14 year old man in front of a bunch of kids. Yeah, indecent exposure, bunch of kids. He gets let out on 10 months of good behavior. Jeez. They didn't call it indecent <laughs> exposure, though. What they, it was, uh, it, what did they call it? Something different. You were saying it was like l- lewdness or s- something <laughs> conduct or yeah. whatever it was. But I mean, misconduct. Sad misconduct. thing is, like I said, if I was one of those police officers that just disregarded him that one point and walked away, I would feel like you a should complete, have resigned. Oh, I'd, I'd feel so horrible. Yeah, like, I, I, that having that way on my conscience would. I don't think I'd ever be able to let it go. No, you shouldn't. Knowing <laughs> that you could have saved the lives of what it was that fourteen-year-old, like yeah, that fourteen-year-old, oh, no, and then six other victims Acid after that. Brain. I feel like something like that. You yeah. should be arrested for. Um, what's, what is Even it? Just you, domestic abuse. Well, no, look, the, the cop though. Like, what is it when you're, uh, Negligence. part oh. of it? Oh, uh, like you weren't accessory. The, yeah. Accessory to murder. It's, it wouldn't be accessory. It'd though. be but more not, negligence. I, yeah. But like, even still, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like he should have involuntary manslaughter kind. I guess. I don't know. I like where it's because of slightly. I mean, I know I'm not like taking I'm not, I don't know, but like I feel like he's slight he's slightly responsible for those other deaths, and so he should have some kind of sentence for not really being Negligent. involved with them, but it's his fault that yes and I mean yes I and no know. the law doesn't cover that though. I know yeah I, I mean I could mean, you imagine there would be no police yeah <laughs> yeah at that point no one would ever even want to risk it yeah that's true I mean everybody's the hard, getting the hard arrested. thing was. There, it's difficult because yeah, there was negligence. There was things that they missed and things that they could have done better. But at the same time, they also really didn't do nothing wrong. That's so dumb. Like it, it according to the law. According to the law, they didn't do anything wrong. They well, the guy had no ID. They took the they took the whatever and <laughs> fucking out. <laughs> <laughs> To so. hell with this podcast. All right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll call it. Shake off your bad juju. Dude, it's so gross. Chris is out. <laughs> if you guys are stuck around, we appreciate you being here. This was a dark one, unsettling, but hey, it's spooky season, right? Yeah. It's not, ugh, this covers a different side of spooky. Yeah, this covers, yeah. I hated it. Every I'm sorry. Second. You did a what, good job, though. Well, you did a very yeah. good job. I, I tried. <laughs> Hashtag, it's like I Draco. hate it. That's your hashtag. Yep. Yep. Hashtag I hate it. And uh, give us your questions. So thank you guys. Man, this is like a difficult one to close out. You guys are like speechless. Dude. <laughs> There's is, nothing to say. Man. This is heavy. We've Except, stared into the abyss and the, the abyss stared back. In one. No, it did not. And All right. We well, hate it. <laughs> we love you guys. Thanks for being a part of this crap. Have Goodbye. a good night. Bye. Bye. It hurts the soul. Ugh, I hate that. The hardest part is we don't have time for another episode, so we got to...